Hello everyone, my name is Alessandro Castello and today I will present you nanotechnology in cancer treatment. Uh, first of all, we need to understand what is cancer. Cancer is the name given to a collection of related diseases in all types of cancer. Uh, some of the body cells begin to divide without stopping and spread into surrounding tissues. This means that it could vary in between lung cancer, colon cancer, breast cancer, etc. Uh, when cancer develops, however, this orderly process divides those cells. Cells that they should die when they're old, they stay alive, and those cells are, are called abnormal. Um, and with these old cells, new cells start developing around, and they, instead of dying, they just stay there, and those extra cells can divide without stopping. Cancerous, tu cancerous tumors are uh, malign, which means that they can spread into other tissues. Uh, and that's the big difference in between a cancerous tumor and a benign, uh, benign tumor. Uh, cancer cells differ from normal cells in many, 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 many ways. That allows them to grow in a different way. The massive difference is that a uh, malign tumor can spread. A benign tumor is just a big mass of dead cells that you can remove them with procedures like surgery. Instead, with a um, cancer or a cancerous uh, tumor, let's say, you need to have or you need to start a process of chemotherapy, radiation, surgery, etc. What is nanotechnology? Nanotechnology is science, is engineering, technology, everything but in a really, really, really small scale called nanoscale, which is about one to a hundred nanometers. Nanoscience and nanotechnology are the study of application of extremely small things that are used across all of the other science fields, such as chemistry, biology, physics, material science, construction, and it's just a process to reduce waste and enhance the product or the end product that people is expecting from it. Uh, the physicist, as you can see, Richard Feynman, he was the person that gave a speech saying that in the future we will have such a small technology that we could do certain things almost at the level of an atom. People call him crazy, yes, obviously, but at the end of the day, Professor Norio, uh, Norio uh, Taniguchi, coined him and told him that, yes, this actually could happen, and the term of nanotechnology was born. It was until 1981, with the development of scanning, tunneling, a uh, microscope, that you could, yeah, that you could see individual atoms that now modern technology began. How technology will improve cancer treatments? Cancer therapies are currently limited to just three types. As you can see, it's surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. Those uh, specific types of me or methods of cancer treatment are, they could risk to damage the normal tissue or incomplete eradication of the cancer or the malign tumor. Nanotechnology offers the means to target chemotherapies directly and selectively to cancer cells. It could attack a specific part without damaging normal or healthy tissue. This um, type of therapy is called neoplasma. Guide in surgical resection of tumors and enhance the therapeutic efficacy of radiation, base, and other current treatment modalities. All of these can add up to a decreased risk to the patient and increased probability of survival. When you do or, or when you're having a surgery or you're doing radiation or chemotherapy for a malign tumor, there's a high risk of having secondary effects you could spread in surgery you could spread to another tissue in radiation or chemotherapy uh, maybe you're not going to burn it or kill the the malign tumor a hundred percent and the chances of survival are not the same today scientists and engineers 
are finding a wide variety of ways to make materials in a nanoscale, one in a hundred nanometers. To take advantage of their enhanced properties such as higher strength, lighter weight, increased control of light spectrum and greater chemical reactivity than their larger scale counterparts. Now there's a quick video that explains uh, the, the process or what is nanotechnology. Oh. Okay. Today, we are going to talk about nanotechnology. When we say something is nano, we mean it is very small. The size of one nanometer is one billionth of a meter, which is about 100,000 times smaller than the width of a human hair. Making new things at this incredibly small scale is called nanotechnology and it's one of the most exciting and fast-moving areas of science today. Some nanomaterials are naturally occurring. You can find them everywhere, in volcanic ash, ocean spray, fine sand and dust. Naturally occurring nanostructures are also present in plants and animals. For example, nanostructures in insect eyes ensure an anti-reflection and water repelling effect so they can fly safely. Nowadays, scientists can create nanostructures themselves. By rearranging the atoms of an object, they can make new nanomaterial with new properties. For example, For example, that are stronger, that are stronger lighter, lighter, or different, or in, different color. in color. The properties change also according to their size, and this is the magic of the technology. In the food area, researchers are working with nanotechnologies to create novel products that may be of benefit to health and diet. For example, nanosilver has antibacterial properties that can be used in food contact material, such as cutting boards. In food supplements, nano-sized carriers increase absorption of nutrients. Nanosensors can be incorporated into packaging to monitor the quality and shelf life of food from manufacturers to consumers. It can also make food ingredients tastier or healthier. Carving up a grain of salt into small nano-sized grains increases its surface area significantly. This means that your food needs far less salt to be equally tasty. This is good news for those who like crackers but are worried about their blood pressure. We need to make sure that food nanotechnologies do not cause harm to consumers. This is why in the EU, engineered nanomaterials in food require a safety assessment. Their specific properties need to be taken into account when assessing impact on human health and the environment. And this is where EFSA comes in. Over the coming years, nanotechnology will touch the lives of all of us. Like many scientific advances, it brings uncertainty and potential risks. It is up to scientists, business and governments to make it work. That was the video. These are the, uh, the bibliography or the references and thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.